And every day, whenever I go out and do a job, somebody runs up to me and either they say they, they love my work or they've seen my work all over. And, and uh, just about everywhere I go, I get somebody talking to me because I drive my, my truck around and I've got my sign on the side and, and consulting with clients out in the street. That was prolific Victorian house painter Bob Buckter. I'm Jeff, and this is Storied San Francisco. Every week on this podcast, you'll get to know artists, business owners, poets, and San Franciscans from all walks of life, as they tell stories, share personal histories, and try to put into words what makes this city so special. In this episode, Bob picks up where he left off in part one, sharing what attracted him to historic homes in San Francisco to begin with. He talks about his brief retirement in the late 70s, his return home, a failed marriage, the history of the colorist movement, the painted ladies, and what's next for him now that he's about to celebrate his 50th year as a painter and color consultant. Here's Bob. Okay, so the attraction to historical, especially Victorian, um, and all the different uh, subcategories of... That started in the early 70s when you were kind of just getting started. That started painting. in the late 60s and early 70s. Uh, one, one of the first people in, in the business was nine years older than me, Butch Cardam. He grew up in the Mission, mm-hmm. and he was uh, painting uh, what was called Painted Ladies. Mm-hmm. That word, those words were coined by... Michael Larson and Elizabeth Pomada, the authors of the Painted Ladies books, and there are five Painted Ladies books, and I was published heavily in all of those books. Okay. That was a help. Yeah, right, getting your name out there. And, and that wor- th- those words, Painted Ladies, caught on around the rest of the country, so now it's, it's actually a, uh, people know what that means anywhere in the country. Yeah. And, and uh, it helped me a lot, pushed me forward a little bit, and uh, I actually was um, doing a small amount of real estate on the side d- during the 1970s, uh, buying, selling, trading, and developing real estate. And by the time I got to be 30 years old, I had enough to retire. Okay. And I did. Okay, in about what year? Said seventy-seven. That was that was in nineteen seventy-six, end of seventy-six, beginning of nineteen seventy-seven. So I I I signed up on a windjammer sail sailing vessel and uh, went all the way around the world. It was a ten-month sail in nineteen seventy-seven, and and the adventures were out of this world. By yourself? I went with it was a it was a ship with 15 crew and 55 passengers starting out and was a sailor, but a motor sailor. And later at the end, it was only th- 35 passengers were left to, to because it's a long time. It's a, lo- it's a lot of weathering the, the it's oceans. Say, it wasn't sharks. It was people just getting off the boat. Right? It's just people getting yeah. off the boats. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. the boat. Yeah. And, and so I decided... You feel, feel, I know it's not San Francisco, but... Feel free to share some of... I mean, you went around the world on a boat. That's amazing. Well, I wanted to come back to San Francisco. I had already bought a chalet up at Squaw Valley. Active skier. Still am. Mm-hmm. Just went skiing a few days ago. Oh, nice. I spent 60 days a year skiing. I spend 80 days a year in Costa Rica and 80 days a year up at Squaw Valley. Okay. Uh, and have been doing that for years. I was married in uh, 19... 19- uh, 89 okay and that lasted about 19 years I unfortunately got divorced mm-hmm. and I was living in Mill Valley and now I and then after that I moved back to San Francisco and I moved back in into one of my buildings over on Dolores Park okay which I had bought in 1975 and I lived there for most most of the time thereafter until 2012 when I bought this place here at 1336 Vermont Street and then I redid the facade remodeled the interior did the building up uh, and a, a friend of mine was a partner here uh, we went condo and I, I developed a little extra living unit down below mm-hmm. and uh, it's uh, very comfortable and I, I, I re- remodeled it exactly to my own 
specifications and mm-hmm. tastes. Every day I marvel at how beautiful it is. Mm-hmm. Look at those floors. Oh, that was the first thing I think I noticed. Yeah. I, I like high gloss floors. Not everybody yeah. does. But yeah, no, it's that's it's my beautiful. style. But but I, I bring clients in here once in a while. I do I do most of my preparation for my color specs here in this office. It's the it's the front bedroom, and uh, it's it's peaceful. Going back, I I, I want to kind of fill in a, a little bit because <clears throat> so for those first I guess it was five to six or seven years of of painting houses and getting your business started. Um, at that time, were you already kind of headed in the direction of painting and color consulting on specifically on older homes in San Francisco? Or it, it started it started off immediately because my first big job was over on Seventeenth Street, and it was a nineteen oh eight Edwardian. Seventeenth and uh, right around um, close to Market. Okay, but up the hill a little bit. So what we'd call Castro today. Yeah, it's Castro it's, then. Sure you yeah, could. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Can you speak to, at the time at least, maybe you didn't know it, but what was it about these homes that attracted you? Well, it was the infinite possibilities of various color combinations and where the colors would be placed on the building to make them look beautiful. And my code is to please the client with the the client's tastes, Mm -hmm. please the general public, and please myself. Mm -hmm. So those are the three things I look after on every one of my jobs. And if if I'm successful on those three levels, I I think I did something nice. Besides these, um, you you mentioned, and I'm forgetting his name, the guy who was a little bit older than you who was already painting. Butch Cardam. Him, and then the two who coined the the term painted ladies besides those folks did you have specific inspirations or is it you said you didn't have really an art background no so did this just just all kind of come organically would you say yeah it just it just evolved on on a natural level i just did it was interested in it and and then after a while back in the mid 70s i was just doing nothing but facades Mm -hmm. because that was so much fun Mm -hmm. and painting the sides and the rear wasn't and and then by 1977, I, I was able to say, the heck with this. Why not just be a colorist? Okay, got it. And 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 but actually, my first color job was in 1973, and it was very hard to convince the public to pay me to pick out colors on their buildings. But I did. Because you didn't have your name wasn't established yet, your reputation is that. What you're I already about? had my signs going by 1971. Oh, okay. And people saw it was Bob Buckter and Friends okay. in in the early to mid 70s as as a painting contractor, and after that, Bob Buckter Color Consultant. Mm-hmm. And now lately, I just came out with a brand new su- sign that says DrColor.com. Just just for a little switcher. Uh, can we talk about that for a second? Sure. Where did that name come from? And we... <laughs> I needed to get myself a, a website okay. back in late 80s. So I came up with that name before somebody else grabbed it. I mean, mm-hmm. everybody else in the world wants it wants a name like that. Yeah. And I was early enough to grab that for myself. That's very early. Ver- oh, yeah. Early, inter- speaking of like internet time, that's very early. That, that was very early. That's right. And um, how did one go about getting a domain name back then? I can't remember. My my ex wife was was into it, and she she kind of herded me into it okay. and uh, taught me how to send and receive emails. Mm-hmm. And and uh, so she she helped me out a, a little bit along those lines. But you know, I was the the working guy. You know, mm-hmm. I brought I brought the coin in, mm-hmm. paid the pay, paid the bills, <laughs> and. Uh, that's what I've done all my life, but uh, it's it's been very rewarding. It's yeah. been a lot of fun. I've met a lot of different people, and I have changed a lot of the way this co- this city looks. For example, I have uh, done seventeen thousand five hundred color jobs just in San Francisco. That oh includes my God. That, what that that includes. Um, <laughs> 
interiors and commercial and industrial every okay so all, not just public facing all all le- but, all phases of, of of architecture career total twenty three thousand do you know how many of those are whether it's a residence or a business how many are public facing like not interiors but exteriors? i would say exterior exteriors <clears throat> 75 to 80 percent of it was exteriors and 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 there just aren't any decorators that that specialize in exteriors you get a lot of interior decorators all over the place but okay now i want to just add add to the ramifications of those numbers okay for every one of my jobs i've done that people have seen i have inspired at least three more right to copy or modify what they're they've seen i've inspired people to do that okay. and those houses have also inspired more it's just like children grandchildren and great gen- gr- grandchildren to the fact that you might as well say my art is on at least 50,000 structures in san francisco wow. if you if you do the math wow and so that's a big that's a, a big influence and i don't know of anybody that that has those kinds of numbers right. behind them or that many years and now I'm getting into my 50th year. Right. And yeah, I'm, I know. I'm still passionate about it. That's awesome. I know for me, like I mentioned earlier, um, just moving here and, and starting to pick up on, you know, the that prevailing sort of theme of, you know, Victorian houses in the city and all the different kinds of, you know, of houses... And I kept seeing your sign, color right. consultant Bob Buckter. Yeah, I just couldn't help it. I, I I feel like it's that talk about prevailing. It was like when I would see a house, if I saw the sign, it would be your name. So some people say, sense. I didn't I didn't know you existed or you're a legend or some something like that. But yes, I said no. Here I am. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And and every day, whenever I go out and do a job, somebody runs up to me and either they say they they love my work or they've seen my work all over. And and uh, just about everywhere I go, I get somebody talking to me because I drive my my truck around and I've got my sign on the side and and consulting with clients out in the street. Mm-hmm. But it's a lot of fun. Um, I just there's two more things I want to talk about. Um, so yeah, so um. Has, has your work changed? Like, my, what, what are you doing these days? My work has changed, especially after 2008 and the economic uh, uh, crash. Uh, my my work uh, went away 60%. Oh, wow. I was producing back in the uh, mid, back in 1905, uh, 2005, 6, and 7, I was producing over 600 jobs a year by myself and and uh, after that it was less than 300 maybe 250 250 jobs a year and and that's a huge drop yeah and, and that's a trickle effect of what was going on in real estate right is that what you're saying oh, yeah big because people did not you know if you have a choice between buying lipstick or buying a, a, a loaf of bread what are you going to do so people didn't spend money decorating they spent it on you know more basic necessities mm-hmm. uh of course the economy changed and got better but uh meanwhile a lot of other people were now getting into being colorists themselves mm-hmm. back in the day there were only a handful of people doing what i was doing and i was really busy mm-hmm. and i spread out to down the peninsula across the bay outside of California, all over the country, and other foreign countries. Mm-hmm. And I've been flown to Hawaii many times to do c- condominium homeowner association jobs and historic and ranch styles. You name it. I mean, I, I've, I've done everything from A to Z. Do I have you- clients that fly me all over all over the western states to do their concrete tilt-ups, business parks, and, and shopping centers. Wow. Do you put your signs... On all these places, the same sign? No. No, okay. I, I was going to say, it's like a scavenger hunt for yeah, me. I'm like, I'm going to go to Hawaii and look for Bob's house. I don't have many signs on commercial and industrial jobs because most people don't want that. Right. And I, I'll only put a, a, a sign on a job that people feel good about, you know, displaying my sign. And I mm-hmm. just, and they say, well, what kind of a deal are we going to work out with this? And I said, 
it's either you like the idea or you pass on it and and, and thank you very much right. it's been a pleasure goodbye i think the point of you having all this work all over the u.s and you said international is that you have a reputation and folks seek you out because of that fortunately yeah and I, you know I, I try to do the best i can for people and 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 i know not everybody likes my work i know that well, i've been told of course yeah. and you know what that's just fine yeah. yeah i and 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 i don't need to get egotistical about it although i i probably am but i <laughs> i don't need to get that that caught up in my own career and and yeah. and, and how, how great of a colorist i am you know yeah. if people want me they'll 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 get a hold of me and if if they don't they'll, they'll go ahead and do something else it's a free world the other thing i am curious to know your thoughts on um is this trend over the last probably in the recovery that we're talking about after 08 of um probably younger people moving to the city buying up expensive property and then painting these old beautiful houses dark gray that's right what's happening with that and what are your thoughts there was just an article please be honest in the chronicle lately about it and i was in in interviewed along with several other other people but um that it has been a trend trend t-r-e-n-d i wish it were a four-letter word but it isn't and 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 um the last time gray was a trend was 1983 it came and it went as as every other color goes everything's it they've they've come and they've gone now the original victorians and edwardians mostly were were pretty plain paint jobs and and uh, i've seen there's a book by roger moss century of color and he documented scientifically what the original colors of the historic uh, buildings were and if you want to see what they looked like you can buy his book here in san francisco this, the houses is, this is on na- a national level oh okay wow. I, don't, I don't know where he's located but not here okay and 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 one one time back in the 80s i was on a bus with a bunch of other people driving around to see painted ladies buildings and i was sort of this one of the stars that was explaining about some of my work and um roger moss was there and and, and we met, and he he, he disdained me mm. because he's he's a scientific researcher, and I'm a creative colorist. Right. So it's sort of opposing, diametrically opposed. And uh, in my opinion, whatever people did in 19, 1870 through nineteen whatever, nineteen ten, twenty, thirty, or whatever year, was a trend at the time. And those trends have changed. And whatever those colors were then, most likely do not translate into today's tastes. Mm -hmm. People are not doing those colors anymore. Mm -hmm. They just don't make sense and they look ugly. Mm -hmm. And back in those days, there were contractors and painters and owners. And I don't think... There were a bunch of color consultants running around back there. So I believe that either the contractor or the housewife picked the colors out in the street with the, with the developer or, or, the, or the, uh, the contractor, and they came up with a solution. And not, none of those people were trained colorists, I don't think. Right. I'm assuming that, that they weren't. Now, look at me. I mean, I've all my experience and... Uh, I, I'll come up with whatever whatever uh, tickles your fancy. You want a pink building? Let's do it. I'm sure you have. And I and I have. And yeah. I love doing pink because everybody else doesn't. Mm-hmm. And that's been a trend that went out in in the, in the 1960s. Mm-hmm. You know, the, some of the Sunset and Richmond uh, houses were lots of them were pink, and and uh, that's fine. But then. It went out of out of style, and now, and for many years, pink is related to girls and, and ladies, and blue is related to boys and men. Yeah. So yeah. so if if a, normally if a man owns a house, he's not going to paint his house pink because it's part of our culture, right. at least today's culture. I'm not you know maybe pink will come back for for both sexes. Who knows? Yeah. But I'm always ready, willing, and able to do pink, or anything else that nobody else is doing. 
because it's the challenge to make it come out and look in good taste. Now, let me define good taste. Please do. My definition of good taste is when most people see something, they like it. That's good taste. When most people see something they, they don't like, that's bad taste. <laughs> that's my definition of what taste is. Mm-hmm. Now, one of the very first things I need to discur- discover in a client as soon as possible is their taste. Mm-hmm what they like, what they don't like. And, and this opens up another little bag of worms as, as far as personal preferences. And, and basically, I, I, I need to find out where people are at. My approach to design is to please the client. Other people that do design work, do the design, hand it over to the client, say, you hired me? This is what you're getting. I'm sorry. I, that's not my approach. Okay. My approach is to find out what people, what's going to take, what it's going to take to please people. And by the end of each of my jobs, virtually every client says, "I'm excited." At the beginning, I, I went all over the board with all kinds of colors and all kinds of placement schedules and everything. Every I went every which way possible. And then after a while, I just said, well, I like it this way, I like it that way, I like it this way. And pretty soon, my own style came out. Right. And people recognize that, and people can recognize my buildings from 100 or 200 feet away. Oh, there's, oh, yeah. a, there's a Bob job. There's oh. a Bob job. And, and so uh, that's satisfying for me. I will add that um, I'm trying to get myself kicked off into doing a book on, on my work. Okay. And I, I've got my slides over here, and I just got to get myself motivated to, to do it because this is now my getting into my 50th year, right. and it's time. And if I don't do it now, and I'm 73 years old, mm-hmm. whew, when, it, when, when will I ever get around to it? Right. So, so that's, that's about the last thing I can say. That was Bob Buckter. Check back next week when we'll hear from the owner of The Social Study, Harmony Fraga. Music for Storied San Francisco is by Otis McDonald. Film photography is by Michelle Kilfeather. The show is produced and hosted by me, Jeff Hunt. You can find us online at storiedsf.com, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and subscribe to the show on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. If that's Apple Podcasts or iTunes, please do us a favor and rate and review what we do. And if you have any feedback for us or you just want to say hi, our email is storiedsf at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. <laughs>